uh, what I like to uh, discuss, where is it? Is the uh, basically the, 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 the simple um, exponential smoothing uh, model, okay? Uh, because uh, there's lots of things to, to, to see, to understand. So I'll start sharing. Okay, this is not right. My book club. Uh, there you go. Okay, so I still haven't. Uh, yeah. Uh, why this is not yeah okay uh maybe not because ah I did it well, I do this all the time. Okay. Let's have a look what's happening here because I don't think it's uh, gonna. Yeah. But anyway, visual. Mm. Okay, <laughs> um, let's have a look at this um, nice chapter. So we are going to uh, have a look at the uh, chapter eight, uh, which is exponential smoothing. Uh, the learning ob objectives are understanding the mechanics of the most important exponential smoothing methods, recognize k components of the time series, and then explore statistical models that underlie exponential smoothing methods. We won't be able to uh, go through all of them today, but um let's get started with the simple exponential smoothing so the 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 author said something like forecasts produced uh using exponential smoothings are weighted averages of past observations and with the weights decaying exponentially as the observation gets older so first things that he said, uh, it compares to the two methods. So the simple methods like our um, uh, our y hat equals to its um, so the observations. Uh, uh, we just use the observations values and then we uh, we use them to forecast, okay? Um, the, the naive method is the weighted average method. So this, this method assumes that the average value, um, so that the most observation uh, is the only important one. 
of the, uh, the, the most recent, so the average values of the most recent of observation is the most, is the only important one. So all previous observations or those ones that are not, uh, so differing from the average are not useful. Um, okay, I'm, I'm trying to um, say this, uh, this better. So obviously if you, uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, uh, we, we have these examples, these case studies of Algeria, okay, and uh, the economy. So about the exports in um, in uh, Algeria, uh, this data set is um, a certain number. So like there's fifteen thousand observations. We have different countries, uh, GD, G, GDP, growth, and exports. So let let's have a look at the country Algeria and the exports. Uh, so we have this uh, uh, new data set, uh, Algeria and exports. So now what we do, we use the auto plot uh, on exports uh, and we can see the trend, okay, of this export. So now th this is the, um, uh, so we, as I said, um, there's different methods. Uh, one is just using these values and then as observations and then um, uh, attempts at forecast, okay? Or uh, we can use uh, the naive method, which is the, we, so, so the average value is the most important one, okay? But and this, this is what happened when we make a model. So we do, we extrapolate an estimate, which is uh, uh, an average. Okay, so the estimated value. The average is usually uh, of this kind. So we have uh, um, uh, a length of time, and we divide this length of time. The um, uh, we, we divide the sum of all observations within the length of time. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's a, uh, an estimation of the average value, okay? What we are going to attempt with this exponential smoothing is something different. So we use... Uh, um, the uh, a moving average based on a certain uh, parameter, which is alpha. So we set this parameter alpha ranging from zero to one, and this would be the smoothing. And um, so, uh, basically, what's happened here is that we have a forecast equation, uh, which is the lag, and that would be that we have this uh, um, uh, time series, but then we um, lagging it of a um, um, in time by one unit, okay? And we look at its average value and then we estimate um, uh, a prediction, okay? The, the, the next, uh, basically, uh, what is gonna happen within the next, like, say, five years, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm going a bit more into details, um, into, into it. So this um, LT, okay, as you can see, so the forecast equation now 
when we apply the exponential smoothing. And so we consider alpha as a parameter, as a smoothing parameter ranging from zero to one, our forecast equation become uh, like this. So our hat, y hat value within t plus h, a, um, so h is the, the, the year, so because the, the time here cannot be seen uh, clearly, but uh, you can see, can you see the, the plot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so yes. the, the, on the x-axis, on the x-axis, we, we have the years. And so H will be the following year. So Correct. H equals to one will be the following year. H equals to two will be two years uh, after. H equals to three will be three years uh, after. That, uh, Federica, that H is because of the horizon. Yeah. The horizon that you are forecasting. So for example, if age, like you said, if age is one, that means that you're forecasting the next period. Okay. So if your periods are monthly or quarterly or yearly, depending on the period, then the age equal to one is going to be the next period. Exactly. Okay? That you are, you know, forecasting within your time series. Uh, exactly. Let me let, let me give you an example. I think it's a little more it's a little bit simpler and it's going to give you the whole the whole picture. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I'll 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 leave you the, the floor. Just just uh, let me finish the okay. the, the those um uh, uh, reasoning. So mm -hmm. basically our y hat is now uh equal to L T, which is uh, uh the transformation basically okay so we we shift the curve uh, of one period in this case one year okay in fact and then we have a smoothing equation so this l uh, sub t it's equal to uh, alpha times our observation y sub t plus one minus alpha uh l sub t minus one we are going to see this uh what is uh, what what actually is okay so uh l sub t is the smoothed value or the level that we are going to use so as you can see l sub t it's equal to its pre pre uh, predecessor in proportion uh, okay so and the uh, uh, sse uh, so the value that we are we need to, uh, to uh, okay reduce as much as possible minimize so yeah minimize and to obtain the it, the minimum is the error okay mm -hmm. is the sum of error and this is our uh, so we are aware of this uh, this formulation, which is exactly the same. What changes is our y hat, which is now calculated based on this uh, smoothing parameter, which is alpha. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, give me give me one uh, so bit of time. Uh, so basically, what's happened here that we apply the model on the uh, which model we apply? We apply the exponential smoothing on the export uh, response variable, and uh, uh, this will be on the error, the trend, and the season. So what? Is this a n n n is uh, let let's let's have a look at this uh, um, uh, 
ETS function. So this is the exponential. Can you see it? Okay. This is the exponential smoothing state space model. Okay. The, um, as you can see, uh, it has, uh, allows you for a formula and other options. Within the formula, then uh, you have, uh, you can specify the error and the error method can be A or M. So additive or multiplicative. The trend can be uh, as well N, A or A, D, which means known. So there is no interaction on additive, multiplicative or dumped variance. Okay. And then we have the season, which is mentioned in the formula and as well can be N, A, M. Uh, so known, additive or multiplicative. What we use here is the error, the trend and the season. The trend and the season are considered by themselves. Okay, not we are not considering any other elements. So known, while the error is additive. Okay, we run this uh, um, model and uh, then we have a look at the coefficients. Okay. The coefficients, so we have an alpha base, so we haven't specified the alpha, okay? Yeah, uh, the model like this, in this way, um, has calculated the best alpha smoothing parameter, which has turned out to be this 0.84, so the 84%. Why the level? is 39. What is this 39? Okay, let's have a look at what's happened here. So if I am my fit, I do argument. What I uh, obtain is uh, um, a data frame with the years. Um, so with the years, the exports, and the fitted values, as well as the receipt, the denoe. Okay, we, do, we don't need them. So we have the fitted value, which are the um, estimations. Okay, these are the observed values, and these are the estimation. For a value, for the best value of alpha that he found, calibrating, which is 84%. Okay, so between zero and one, it's 0 0.84. If I uh, do a bit of ma like manipulations on this uh, data set, okay, on this, um, uh, okay, adding a row, because the, the dimension of this is uh, 58. Okay, if I add a row, because what I'm, where I'm going is basically here. Okay. It's basically here. Okay. So as you can see, it starts from zero. So we don't have 1959. We start our uh, time series from 1960. So we add the row and shift the value, the values. Okay, so I did a bit of manipulations. And so what we obtain, now you can see just the tail. Uh, as you can see, we missed this value. Okay, so we shifted as you can see here. So we shifted our, our observation um, of one row in a way that, so our starting point, it's back forward. 
And uh, the 2017, uh, which is this, our last observation, as you can see here, is filled with the value of the estimation released uh, by the model. Okay. While in my um, manipulation, it's empty. It's an empty value. So I need to forecast this value and then put it in the in the table okay so um as you can see i have renamed and uh, what's happened to shift these things i use this lag function no you know and then the 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 value shift uh, of one I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we can even do this. Okay, so this is what's happened. So it started from 1959 times zero. And my these are the observations, so the export. So I renamed the observation uh, and I lag it. So it shifted up um, of one. And it is right because it started from uh, 1960, while the level I left it like that. And so, as you can see, the level is the same values as this, but the level, what, what is the level? We, are, we already said what is the level, no? So the level is our estimation. As you can see, our estimation is exactly the next the following value. Okay. And here uh, you find the forecast, which is calculated. You have seen. This is the level, which is which is calculated based on the smoothie parameter, okay? And uh, so the rest of the, the table follow by itself. While we, while we reach the, the bottom, so the uh, nine, 20, 2017, we have a missing value in the lag. And this is what we, I don't know if, it, if it's, uh, so what what is this value? This value is uh, twenty two point four four, and it is the result of our forecast. So we still haven't uh, used the forecast function. Now, if we forecast, so our fit. We apply the forecast function and uh, uh, within five years, okay. So this is uh, the, the value that we found. That we found. So uh, this is 19, uh, 2018, 2019, 2020. And if I uh, then plot this, uh, this is from the book, okay, you can see that there is a, a shift Why is that this time? <laughs> okay. Okay. So 
as you can see, there is a shift of one year of the uh, the time series. And this is a this is the prediction, which is twenty two point forty four. Uh, and it is the same for five years. Okay, so this is uh, the simple, uh, the simple one. So a, a, a little mention is about the difference. We already said that, but the difference between um, a trend and a, uh, a, um, a season and a trend. So a trend refers to the long-term pattern or direction of a time series, and it represents underlying growth or decline in data over time. So it can be upwards, downwards, or flat. Okay, it can be linear, non linear. While the seasonality, because it is important to identify the, the, the difference between a trend and a seasonality. A seasonality, on the other hand, refers to the pattern that of regular fluctuations in a time series that occur at fixed intervals of time, such as daily, weekly, monthly, okay? It's caused usually by factors such as weather, holidays, and, and et cetera. So, uh, this, this uh, exports, it is, my question is, is it a trend? Because in the model we use both. A trend and the season. Uh, Federica, I think in order to, for any time series, in order to identify if there's a trend or not, or a seasonality or not, you have to do the decomposition. Okay, the SDL decomposition, seasonal trend level decomposition. If you apply that to this series, you will see that there's no definite trend and definitely there's no seasonality. So that's why in this model, the ETS, which is error trend seasonality, you're only considering the error because there's no trend and there's no seasonality identified. But for that, you have to do that, you know, exploratory uh, graph of this STL decomposition that we study in past chapters. Okay. So, and um, if we uh, already done this, um, I had to do this because, uh, so if we have a look at the, um, so if, if we now, what is it? Okay. If we now vary the value of alpha, can you see it? Can you see the, the plot? Yeah? We can see that we are steady on, the, on a shift of, uh, of, of uh, just one period, just one year. But we are now varying alpha. So the, the model automatically selected an alpha of 0.8, uh, 84, about 84. Okay. Here you can see uh, what could have been with other uh, different alpha. And how uh, the result of the model could, could change, basically. Okay, so they are quite different. In this uh, uh, in this model here, we we haven't specified. Um, we haven't specified an alpha. If we want to specify an alpha, we could specify an alpha in, uh, in the trend. As you can see, for example, 
there is an alpha range or the alpha uh, inside the trend uh, of um, inside the, the, the trend uh, that uh, can be used. So you can, uh, if you don't specify alpha, uh, the value of the smoothie parameter, if uh, you, can, you can set it to zero, so the level will not change over time. You can set it to one and the level will update similar to a random work process, for example, or uh, you can specify a range. Okay, as well as you can specify a beta, beta range, and so on and so forth. So this is the, uh, I'll leave you uh, to you. Uh, this is uh, uh, the simple, how it works, a simple exponential smoothing. What is a smoothing parameter, the alpha? And what is the um, the age parameter when we forecast within a certain length of time? If you want to have a look at the animation, we can even uh, have a look at the animation. I don't know if you are interested in that. Um, otherwise, stop sharing. Let me share my screen. Okay, uh, this is what I was talking about on the decomposition of the time series. Okay, this is the uh, Algeria economy, right? Okay. Uh, okay, so this is the time series. As you can see, even the smooth of the lows, you can see that there is really no definite trend because it, it kind of goes a little bit down and then goes up and then goes back. So if you do the decomposition, the seasonality trend level decomposition, you will see that this is the first uh, plot at the top is the original time series. Then the one in the middle is the one with the trend. And as you can see, there is no definitively trend. It just go ups and downs, okay? So we have to investigate, if we're going to be, you know, be forecasting this, we're going to investigate you know, why is it going up and down? Maybe there's some events, some external factors that are influencing that. But de definitely, there's really no significant trend in terms of increasing or decreasing. It just goes up and down. And then you see the reminder. And there's no definitely, there's no seasonality associated with it. That's why in that model, the ETS, we are just activating the error component, uh, leaving in none, the trend and the seasonality, okay? So usually what you do with this ETS also is that you can do an auto ETS. So it will, you know, change. It's like a hyper tuning, hyperparameter tuning. It will change different settings on the additive, multiplicative or none to get the best, you know, uh, MSC, the mean square error, the, the, the minimized. The score because that's the cost function that we're trying to minimize. Okay, so that that's one one that uh, in practice is is how is uh, uh, is how is is applied. Okay, because you have to you know play with them. Now, uh, I did because in the previous cohort I was going to do this uh, this chapter. Okay, so I got a little tutorial on how the function works when you change the alpha, okay? So we have the formula of the simple exponential music, which is the alpha by the previous observation and then add the other observation at a weighted from the alpha, which is one minus alpha. And it will give you the forecast for the next level. So if we have a small time series of seven, seven, different observations, seven different observations weekly, what you do is that the model, what it does is that it creates a lag, right? Creates a lag and it's going to do, okay, the next observation, I'm going to use it as my input, right? Okay, 
And then I'm going to apply, right? I'm going to apply, uh, you know, the formula, the, 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 the weighted, the weighted average, okay? So what it's going to do is that the error is going to be by the next observation and the forecast. So that's going to be your residual, your error. And you're going to square it, okay? When you square it, this is going to be the mean, the sum of the square errors, you are going to get the mean, and this is going to be your indicator if your alpha is optimal or not. For example, if we do 0.1 in this one, we change the alpha, and look what happens to the mean square error. It goes up. Okay, let's say that we do 0.2. Okay, so it goes down, but probably would be okay. Can we go a little bit more with the alpha, or we have to stay between 0.1 and 0.2? Okay, so let's increase the alpha, 0.3. Okay, it's going up. So that means that your optimum is between 0.1 and 0.2. That's what the auto ETS really is doing. So eventually, you're going to reach a point where there's, you know, just like a, a concave and you get the global, the global uh, minimum. And that global minimum with the alpha of 0.17 in this example is going to give you the minimum uh, mean square error. So that's going to be the optimum model for the ETS in this case. And your forecast for the next week, which is going to be the eighth week, if you're forecasting only one period, is going to be 40.45, okay? And it's going to stay, if, if you do forecast, you know, on uh, subsequent periods, it's going to be that way, okay? Because we don't have any trend and we don't have any seasonality. So that's more or less the, the inner works of that, you know, particular simple exponential smoothing. Okay? Okay, so that's basically what I had, you know, to add to the, you know, to that to that model, okay. Okay, so Federica, uh, do you have anything else that you uh, want to to discuss uh, on the chapter? Yeah, well, well uh, th there is another. Um, um, uh, like plot uh, like this in the uh, where is it? in the chapter there is another uh, which is um Something that um, it's mentioned uh, here, for example. I can scan it. Well, anyway. Um, I think we. Uh, um, uh, I I have more. Uh, I I think to um, about the uh, the the these things. How to make the animation? Let me. I don't know if you uh, if you are interested in that. Because what I what challenged me, basically, um, this is the. Uh, the data set okay i do the auto plot and as you can see this is the uh our starting point okay mm -hmm. um then i need to add those series of lines that changes within a different um uh, alpha range within the alpha range mm -hmm. okay but in order to do that, I need the fitted values, okay? And those fitted values, 
are released by the, the model, okay? Uh, and the model, you need to specify uh, an alpha range. So I've made uh, uh, this, um, uh, let, let's have a look at this uh, thing here. Okay, so as you can see, I made a, col a new column. This is one uh, with alpha uh, and open one, and it goes to 58. Okay, so 58 uh, observations. And then it starts to be uh, to be no point two mm -hmm. and start back again from nineteen sixty to two thousand and seventeen, and then starts with uh, no point three. Okay, so now I have this uh, nice. Uh, um, information that are all together binded uh, row binded uh, that I can use in the plot okay where is it okay in the plot so I add the geom line I use the fitted value I group them by alpha the alpha the colon the, the vector and then I color them by alpha, mm -hmm. of, by a factor of alpha, okay? The data, uh, specify new data. So, uh, and then if I just run this, this is not going to be animated. But you can see that there are uh, mm -hmm. uh, nine, uh, new uh, time series that are calculated by the model based on this specific value of alpha. Now I'm going to animate this with uh, GA GG animate uh, package and you use this uh, transition state, what do you want to change? So transitioning to and from, it's alpha. Alpha has to be, so the parameter that you specify has to be within the data. And then, uh, you specify the length and the state length. So this transition state it's uh, um, a transition. This is not uh, between several distinct stages. And so we, you can even specify a previous state or the next state. But if I do this, uh, it works uh, very well. So you specify like the transition length equals to two, the state length equals to one. And then you need to use this uh, is uh, aesthetic, which is, uh, uh, basically controlling uh, the aesthetic and uh, our value change to another during tweaking. Mm. Uh, it basically progresses linearly mm -hmm. within the, the, the things that you um, change. Then uh, that, that, that's, uh, that's all you need. So you basically run this, you name it as a P. So you give it a name. And then, um, where, where is it? Okay. And then you use this function 
animate. I think I'm going to use it here. Okay, animate P, which is the um, Maybe have a look at this. Uh, what is this animate function? And um, this function takes a ggAnim object and uh, uh, render it. Okay, the inside allows you for different options, and there is this uh, FPS and the duration. So, as you can see, the F. PS is the frame rate of the animation. So you frame it uh, in, um, by seconds. So if I run this function, it takes a bit, like uh, um, a few seconds. Basically, what, what you do, it's a simple uh, regular plot, okay? You see how it looks like, and then you decide what do you want to animate. We, you want to animate by time, so you can animate by time, or in this case, by alpha. And you can see now that there is no the the, the legend okay disappeared, but so these are the different level of alpha and how it changes this. Yeah, so I think the 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 next uh, the next time uh, we'll go through the other um, so the options. It can be added to uh, an exponential moving model and uh, to see uh, other case studies and um, understand uh, understanding a bit better because it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we still have uh, how to apply exponential smoothing with trend. Uh -huh. with seasonality and also uh, do some forecasting. Yeah. You know, uh, exercise forecasting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we can cover that, you know, next next week. Also, uh, I suggest that we work on exercise number five. Oh, okay. Okay, that's in 8.8. .8. Yeah, because usually it's good to uh, apply uh, the theory, you know, to a uh, to, 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 to an exercise so that you can see some of the quirks and some things that you could uh, you could encounter in you know real world uh, time series. okay yeah so uh, yeah so let, let's continue then uh, for next week and then uh, if we have time you know then we can we can do something about the, that exercise part okay okay. okay. Okay, and and also, uh, uh, Federica, I don't know if you noticed that in the textbook, digital textbook, they are including the authors are including videos now. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that that is something very recent that they're including, and those videos give you a great summary yeah. of what some of the chapters are. So you know, <laughs> I suggest for us and also for for future cohorts that. You know, you you should you you should watch those videos. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're very good. They're very good, and they explain some things that usually in the book they're kind of you know a gray gray areas. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Thank you very much. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next Friday. <laughs> bye. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Ciao. 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 <laughs>